Welcome back everyone to Rotterdam and to the semi-final where Origin are on match point against the reigning champions, Fnatic. Something I didn't expect to say so early in the day. I'm also joined by some special guests here to talk about what could be the final game in the semi-final. Schalke's amazing and Caps from G2 Esports. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Um, I am a bit stunned, to be honest, at what has happened so far. Can you tell me, Amazing, from watching the series, what do you think has happened? And are you surprised that OG is playing so well? I'm not surprised that OG is playing so well. I thought they were really collected. Like Even, even in the losses in T2, they didn't look terrible. They just looked a bit uh, out of sync once in a while. But throughout the regular season, they have been in sync. And I think here again, they just saw early game plans and they execute on them. But the Fnatic is just really weak. They make a lot of mistakes that are so uncharacteristic for them, where they just all play stuff and they don't force at the right times either. And it just looked completely lost almost. Yeah, it doesn't feel like the Fnatic we've seen the last couple of weeks. Caps, um, what do you think of both teams and how they've played so far? I mean, so going into this series, I had Fnatic 3-0 OG. Uh, so I'm definitely surprised with the results so far. Um, but at the same time, I don't think it's like as bad as we maybe make it out to be. You know, like Fnatic also had the lead in this game and stuff. So. I, I, I still believe in Fnatic bouncing back, and um, yeah, that's... <laughs> uh, short, from what you've seen here so far, are you scared of anything for tomorrow? I, I am not really scared. I think what both teams are showing is something really weird. Like we're seeing is like some Sona Taric, and we see random answers like Blitzcrank, and we see, we see the Annie, and stuff like this. Uh, I am not really sure why they're doing all these kind of things. I have the same feeling when I saw LSK, like the Talia, Talia Pantheon, you know, I think people can just like play a bit more standard. And that might sound weird for me, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I think you can just play a bit more standard and then just uh, play something you're really confident on. Uh, and I think you'll have a lot more uh, luck, especially when it's like on the big stage. Okay, D does it make it extra hard for tomorrow? Because obviously you don't know who you're playing until this series is over and now they're playing every pick in the book. <laughs> well, I mean, I, th I, think, I think we're still gonna, just going to go and play our own style, play the same things we, we did all splits. Uh, and then if they want to pick Blitzcrank, if they want to pick Annie, if they want to pick... Sona, you know, then, then let them come. <laughs> <laughs> let them do it. Okay, so let's wrap up how we got here. OG is on match point, Yamato. In game two, it looked to be all Fnatic all the time, but in the team fights, OG completely came back and demolished Fnatic. I feel like Fnatic built a massive lead in this game, and I think they should have taken it home. They had the Twitch on the scaling, but I feel like all the time they're very overzealous in the dives. Just before this, we saw Beepo diving, giving away kills. This time around as well, I think. Rushing the Nash after the Scanner kill might seem logical, but you have to be careful when you play against Sona Tarek because we've talked about how strong their ultimates are in those team fights. Yeah, and of course, this was very interesting because we saw Sona Tarek game one. We all said, actually, it should win because it's super, super strong. It didn't. Why did it work in this game versus this composition? I feel like this time around, Sona Tarek picking it against Fnatic that always want to team fight, it's perfect because they are not known to split push. They're not known to hope or whatever. They're always going in, in, in. And if you get perfect Sona Tarek ultimates, you're going to win those fights. I also just think that OG is really good at utilizing CC in general in team fights. They're a team that is really uh, uh, collected. And whenever they can look for a pick, they can actually make that happen. Whereas Fnatic, honestly, they need Reckless on a carry in a, in a honestly, semi-final matchup. There's no other way. You can't Twitch have is a carry. Yeah, you cannot have him on Sona Tarek as they had in game one. So yeah. I think that's where the difference comes, comes from. Whereas Patrick, he can actually be on that pick and still have an effect for Origin. Yeah, it looks absolutely uh, crazy. Caps, you've been on this team on Fnatic last year. How do they handle a situation like this? How do they handle being down 0-2? You weren't that often, you know, just in the final at Worlds, I believe. Uh, what is going on now in the team? I mean, so we had a lot of time downtime, you know, like even at Worlds 2017, we were like 0-4 down, you know. So we definitely had a lot of talks where we are like, uh, what's actually going wrong, you know, and thinking about, like even Shell last year, we went lost the first game. So I think it's something Fnatic is good at, and that's why I'm still confident Fnatic taking it back. Because I think those two first two games were, uh, yeah, as I said, like Sona and Tarek and all these kind of uh, <laughs> things happening. And I think now they're going to go into the game and either just play like a normal game or they're going to ban Sona and Tarek and then I'm confident they'll, they'll turn around the series. But, okay. But yeah. yeah, we'll see if that happens. <laughs> I also wanted to just take a look at who's been playing really well so far. And I think Nukeduck is a guy we got to talk about. We talked a lot about Nukeduck versus Nemesis. And we talked about the fact that if OG want to win, they got to give him the weapons to win the game, Yamato, and that's what they've done so far. I feel like they're finally putting him on champions where he gets a lot of advocacy. He's played the Zed, he split pushed, he played the Rise, he team fought, and also, of course, split pushed as well. Wins the split against uh, the Aatrox later in the game, and I think uh, that's massive for them. I think when Nuketuck is in control of the game, it shows, and I think he's the person that can lead from his position. Yeah, amazing, you know him very well, of course. Is Nuketuck going to be the key to OG taking game three? I mean, in general, um, OG is a team that 
obviously he, they need to control the game, basically, they need to control the pace of the game. So having Nuke Deck in general, just being on a strong champion or basically counter matchup or anything that feels, he feels comfortable on to beat Nemesis with is going to be really, really, really uh, important coming forward and has been important throughout the series. Yeah, I totally agree. So now uh, on match point, OG can bring it home and face G2 tomorrow. Um, so. Let's wrap it up then. If you're OG, you cannot let this slip through your hands because you don't want to give Fnatic an inch because we know what they can do with that if they get to a game four and five. Yamato, Fnatic is on blue side. On OG, what do you make sure you draft going into game three? I think two games we saw very refreshing new strategies. The question is, OG, do they have a third one? Fnatic, are they going to ban the Sona Tarek? Are they going to go back to the classic Braum? Because that's what I want to see from Fnatic. I want to see Hilisang on Braum or Rakan because that's what you're scared about. You count the items of Reckless, you see one, two, three, three items, the clock is ringing and all of a sudden you're in a tough spot. Yeah, Caps, do you agree? What does Fnatic need to pick on blue side? I mean, I, I think as I said, like, I think if they just go back to playing like they played last week and then the weeks before that and they just play a more standard way, because as recently we didn't see the Sona Tarek last week, right? They probably uh, hadn't practiced it much and they probably haven't practiced it much this week either, right? So it's not something they're super confident on. So I would just go back to what they're, they're good at and then I want to see a free zero, right? <laughs> Amazing. It sounds difficult. Just go back to what was working for you when you're in this arena, when you're down 0-2. There must be a reason why they're doing what they're doing. I yeah. think maybe they didn't have the stream results. Maybe they just don't feel comfortable on actually like playing the meta against Origin, who's actually good at adapting to a team that has played a certain style all the time. Yeah, it has been fantastic adaptation, preparation, and play on the Rift for Origin. They are doing the unthinkable, and they are now on match point versus the reigning champions, Fnatic. Let's see if they can do it, and we send it to the casters for game three. Here we are, Shox. Do or die for the side of Fnatic. Of course, in this game, you can watch through the eyes of Bwipo over twitch.tv slash Riot Games 2. He is going to need a monster performance to look for the reverse sweep to bring this series back. But it has been an incredible level of performance for OG. Not a lot of people expected it after that round two versus G. I would almost say just about nobody outside of the OG faithful expected this kind of performance, but they look so incredibly good as we had in the game. Dracos, we called up like 20 people and three of them got behind Origin and two of those people were Origin members. <laughs> <laughs> so this was a, a, a huge undertaking here for Origin. I feel like everyone counted them out after like you're saying, they got uh, slapped by G2, but it's just a completely different form. The agency, the uh, decisiveness, the play making potential and not just Nuke Duck. Like, I'm glad that the analyst has grabbed hold of him because he's having a superstar performance, but Mithy is popping off these games. Oh yeah, I mean, the Blitzcrank was just a beauty to behold for him down in the bottom lane and they beat Fnatic in game one with heavy, heavy early game innovative picks. Game two, it was about the scaling. They outlasted Fnatic and now with Fnatic once again on blue side, I wonder, do Origin get the Sona Terrific account? Is that allowed to happen in game number three? And you might have said for some of these teams that they may try no. to hide no, 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 something no. going into the games versus G2 tomorrow, but Fnatic have to put everything on the line here. They decide to ban the Sona. It was a game of chicken, and Fnatic are the first team to crack. They're like, we're not going to play it. We don't have the confidence in it. Just ban it away. And this is exactly what I wanted to see, and I agree with Caps. I want to see standard League of Legends from both these teams. For Fnatic, because hopefully they get a fighting chance in the series, and for Origin to prove that they can beat Fnatic in every iteration. We can beat you in the early game, we can beat you in the late game. Let's play standard, let's see how you fare. And with Skarner and Karthus banned away, it feels like we will once again see the Rek'Sai picked up by Broxa. However, I imagine the Jarvan will be a quick response. Jarvan is the expected pick here, especially with that Skarner ban. Now, the question is, like, how does the, how does this draft fit play out? Because the last two games we've seen Sona Tarek snapped in immediately. I like the Lissandra pick to deny from Nemesis, but I don't like blinding it for Nuke Duck. It's something they did a lot in their series against G2. And I think Origin are much more successful in or when Nuke Duck is on something that can make plays solo. For me, I think this is going to be the uh, Jarvan lock-in in second rotation. It has so go. much potential because it has the flex between the jungle as well as the top lane. So you still get that capability of playing with the counter picks on red side. And like you were talking about, you know, you could blind pick your mid lane here. You could go for the Lissandra, but Ryze just has such a comfortable matchup because he has the, the scaling potential that Lissandra doesn't. Exactly. Both Ryze and Lissandra are valuable flex picks, but it is the ability to play a side lane much more frequently as well as that bonus damage. Now, oh, Fnatic, oh, oh, oh. I like it. We're going back to the vein for Reckless. And of course, the Lissandra, which if available, Fnatic will always take for Nemesis. And coming into the series, we talked about Vayne for Reckless, and it felt like any time Fnatic was playing in the playoffs thus far, if Vayne was up, 
they were willing to pick this champion. Now returning to those roots, maybe something that the analyst has talked about, where they are just willing to play the standard League of Legends. But Origin taking away the Braum here feels like a very good sign for this team. And the question is, you know, are we going to get any crazy picks now remaining in these last two options? So far, it's, again, very heavy 5v5, a lot of potential, the, the flex potential as well as playing to those side lanes. Khan now banned away, limiting some of the more aggressive engage options for Hillisang. When Braum is off the table, he almost exclusively plays these roaming engage style champions. Yeah, and Fnatic often, uh, counter to a lot of other teams in the league, save their support pick for the second phase of the draft. That's why you see, you know, Rakan, Alistar banned away from them pretty heavily. And why they do that is because they're very comfortable giving uh, Bwipo or Nemesis safe blind picks, like the Lissandra here, which they still can flex around, and they value getting a very strong two versus two to try and win the lit game through their bottom lane, which is surely what they're going to try up in this one. This looks like the easiest and safest option for Patrick right here. Again, hiding the fact, is that a Jarvan top? Is it Jarvan in the jungle? And allowing Alfari more information and more time if he's going to be the weapon that Origin used in this game. And potentially a situation where we could see positive lane matchups for both Alfari and Nuke Duck. Huge as the bot lane is already opting for a very defensive route on the side of Origin. And I sort of expect to see the Aatrox again now for Bwipo. It's been a very good pick for him in the past. They should lock that in, which means that Origin could be very comfortable sending the Jarvan up into the top lane to match against the Aatrox. The difference is, with Skarner banned away, Cold would have to jump a little bit further down on the jungle tier list, whereas he is very comfortable in matchups that he knows quite well. Oh, oh yeah, now coming out. Hillisang, one of the best Pike players in Europe, if not the best. Have to see how he can perform in this game. A ton of pressure on his shoulders, and this is the game that he opts to go for it. And Macy, now the cannon coming into the top lane. It was an okay matchup for Alfari in game one. It's going to look for the rinse and repeat here. Cold will commit the Jarvan to the jungle, and the Rise will go mid lane into the hands of Nuke Duck. And very standard compositions from both teams. They have played these champions so many times. If you are a fan of Origin, if you are a fan of Fnatic, this is exactly what you want to see both your teams slated against. And it feels like it's kind of like the same game. You know, if Patrick and Mithy are known as being kind of this more defensive, utility oriented bot lane for Origin, and Fnatic are all about trying to attack in that bot lane with Reckless and Hilly, Hilly now on his pike, can they actually break Patrick or Mithy, or will they hold? strong again, because so far, Patrick and Mithy have just been absorbing Reckless and Hilly every time. And with Ezreal Braum, you expect to see much more of the same. I think looking at the holistic composition here from Origin, they just have a lot of options, whether it's the 1-3-1 with Kennen and Ryze in side lanes trying to break down towers, or the team fights, which again, they have a lot of really solid tools to work with. I think that they're much more flexible in the way they want to play the game, whereas Fnatic have a bit more narrow of an approach. But now Fnatic in position to play a composition that they are incredibly comfortable with. So many picks that we have seen before this season. OG on the cusp of a 3-0 victory. The OG faithful can be proud, but Fnatic fans, if you are out there, your team needs you more than ever. It will take a reverse sweep for them to bring this series back. And rightfully so, I think doubt in the minds of many after what has been a crushing performance in favor of OG thus far. Yeah, Origin looking to rewrite history. The last time we were in Rotterdam in 2016, it was an Origin G2 series, G2-1, and Origin want to get back there and say, no, 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 it's our time. They've already shown us that there is much more for this team than the 0-3 they showed in round two. Cheeky fans. <laughs> Breaking the tension for a brief moment, ladies and gentlemen, as we get ready for game three. Match point for Origin. It is going to be a bloody game, no doubt. The reminder, it does certainly start here, and it will end tomorrow. But only one of these teams can move on to face G2 in the finals, and it is certainly do or die. Fnatic leaving the base and knowing that this is their last chance. They must win three games in a row if they want to move on towards the finals. And they've got a much more standard draft, I would say, but a lot of people's eyes are going to be moving towards this pike in the bottom lane. Hillisang has been known to play this champion. He's been known to try and terrorize games on this pick. And you'll actually notice he's starting with the ancient coin here for the lane. That's a really good lane option. You lose the so you lose the push of that relic shield, but get 5% CDR. And for a champion with cooldowns of 14, 15 seconds on his Q and E early on, that's going to be strong, as well as the added mana sustain to help him throw out those spells a little bit more frequently. You can see the rallying cry for the Fnatic fans out in the audience, trying to drum up the hype, drum up some cheers for his favorite team. But now we're looking at this early game, and 
Just going to have to see how the laning phase unfolds. Yeah, I like that you see the fan there, too, because when Fnatic retook the stage, coming out, out of the break, the crowd erupted. You know, when Origin came out, it was loud, but when Fnatic joined and sat down in their seats, it was thundering here in Rotterdam. The crowd definitely wants to see more games, but it's going to be a difficult task here for Fnatic that are going up a very dominant-looking Origin roster. And for me, in this early game, I really want to focus in on both these Danish junglers, Cold and Broxa. They're both known for their heavy pathing. Uh, talking to Yamato before this series, he was really respectful, obviously having worked with Cold in the past, formerly known as Trashy, that in a matchup like Jarvan Rek'Sai, when Cold feels like he knows both sides of this matchup, that he's played both the Rek'Sai and the Jarvan hundreds of times, that he just turns into a completely different animal. He is so good at saying, okay, I know exactly how Rek'Sai is going to path, I know exactly where I need to be, and opening up these timings to create plays for his team. So uh, I'm all attention on Cold and how he's going to help snowball this early game for Origin. Yeah, and you see it right there. He takes the red buff, hops over the wall, knows there's not going to be a Rek'Sai clearing away his blue buff early on, so he goes for the invade, snags that one away and uh, actually avoided Broxa entirely. And now splits the map in such a way that it is going to be bottom side in favor of Fnatic. Patrick going trouble. Wow. But this is exactly what you expected, and this is what Origin drafted for. They knew that they were going to get kicked in in the bot lane. That's why they have such a defensive bot lane, whereas Origin are now putting all of their eggs in the Alfari basket, giving him so much safety to again try to abuse Whippo, and now turning towards Nuke Duck. But here's the dive. You see the dive. Broxa now stepping forward. Patrick has to be careful about how he's going to approach this one. Does move out. Now the immediate knockup is going to follow. Patrick all but set to fall. First blood going over to Reckless. Just the start Fnatic wanted. And the question was, can Patrick and Mithy hold the door against Reckless and Hilly? And Fnatic says no. Slams it shut. First blood to Vayne. And it's, it's a signature early bot lane tower dive here from Box Broxa. We saw it before on picks like the Nocturne, but the Rek'Sai looks so much better for him. Great start here for Fnatic. Exactly the start they needed to build that confidence coming into Game 3 when their backs are against the wall. And this is what we talk about when we talk about Brox, is that yes, sometimes he does play stock standard jungle. Sometimes he's predictable, but sometimes he takes these risks. He goes for these big plays, and you look at the bottom side of the map, Nice elixir there in the inventory of Patrick, but the mana crystal not so nice. Using the TP, and that's always going to happen. That is such a painful back timing for Patrick. At this point, he really just wants to shove the lane in, try to get a reset, and he immediately backed so he can get something more viable like the tier. Uh, Fnatic at this point, which is why Hilly is starting to rush towards them, want to keep Patrick and Mithy in this lane to abuse that type of back difference, which is why they're pulling cold here. They're like, you need to help us shove in this lane so we can actually get Patrick onto a useful item. Yeah, cold will be seen walking over the ward there, but again, Again, it's not about the gank here. Although actually he cancels the reset. So because Broxa knows Cold was down here, he's gonna walk in towards the top side of the enemy jungle. Raptors have respawned and Krugs are also up, so it means he can seal away at least one of those camps. Good look for Broxa. Will match up now in the jungle CS difference as Cold spends a ton of time on the bottom side, gets that back and immediately turns his attention towards the top side to pick up Krugs to back up Alfari if necessary. But we check in on the rest of the lanes. Everything relatively even in the mid lane. Top lane, though, already heavily Alfari favored. We've yet to see Alfari be kind of a, a big threat on the cannon. Didn't see it as much in game one. Was so much about the rest of the team. Maybe this is the game where it changes. But for now, Nuke Duck in trouble. A perfect prison to stop Roxxon from moving forward and finding the knockup means that Nuke Duck can back away. Miffy. Ooh, spotted out by the Tremor Sense there. Now, Cold is up towards this top lane, uses the EQ over the wall, doesn't know there's a ward in this bush, so Whippo should be able to get the channel of the recall off unless Cold walks up to stop him, but he doesn't have the spells for it. Just came up. And Whippo not scared, he is going to back off here, and Whippo has outplayed these tower dive situations before, but is he going to take the risk and step forward up against OG? Look at the call, though. Broxa had the ability to walk up towards the top line and prevent the dive, but he says, no, I don't think Cold's going to go for it. Cold ends up walking away. That means Broxa makes it towards the top side and can take the crab. Yeah, and there's just limited information for Origin to play with there. They choose to play it safe. They don't exactly know where Broxa is. Again, that unpredictable pathing coming to fruition and saving Whippo. And again, Whippo, when he cheats forward like that, yeah, he's got the flash. He can look for the outplay, but you're like, okay, this guy's staying on the tower. Surely someone's behind him. And it opens up this type of window for Fnatic to look for for a play bot. And there's no doubt the top side is going well. Big side of OG, but Fnatic are dominating the bottom side of the map. Reckless stepping forward, the chain CC comes out. Nemesis ready to just point and click down. Mithy is going to try to move out, but Mithy survives. TP burned on the bottom side. Alfari only level five. No threat of re-engage, but absolutely a Fnatic favorite dive. Yeah, Origin are able to stay alive though, but at the same time, it's Whippo pushing down the top lane, trying to pick up some turret plates as well. So Origin spend a lot to not lose harder in this bottom lane, but you can see the CS is starting to get a little out of hand here as Reckless is up 15. TP now back to the top side coming in. That's a Brum. 
From Braum. Don't All hold right. the wave. Give me some money. He still thinks he's playing Tarek. That's good. I mean, you might as well. Attack speed Braum. That's what we're going to see here. He has Final the unsealed game. spell book, of course, so it's not like he took the teleport himself. His flash was on cooldown from that dive, so just uses that summoner to cycle through and maybe going to set Stepping up some down. vision here for Alfari. I don't think looking for the gank is possible. I've been waiting for this one, of course. Alfari does have the level six now, but difficult situation once again for the bottom lane. 61 CS to 38. You check at the level discrepancy. Reckless level six now to Patrick's level four. Very, very difficult spot for the Ezreal to be in, and it feels like Fnatic will just probably try to rinse and repeat these dives. I mean, the short sweet of it is that Patrick and Mithy are in a bad way. This is not where they want to be. They're going to get dove repeatedly at this point, and it's just about what can Origin get on the other side of the map. Yeah, Fnatic setting this up very well. They slow push this wave in bottom lane. Notice how Whippo is pathing straight towards bot lane. Even without the TP, he's on the move. Nemesis waiting for them to return to the lane. Broxa in the river as well. So Origin are like, uh, guys, we can't really do anything at the moment. Patrick still level four will continue to be denied. And the reality is this is so much more punishing because it is something like a mountain drake that you're also playing for oh, control. Mithy. Oh, Mithy. Mithy gets deleted. The fight will immediately turn. Unbreakable has been used. Mithy's still alive. Now comes the flag and drag in. Hillisang has grabbed the kill. Cold and Nuke Duck now on the tree. But Popo is stepping forward. Fnatic have the momentum in this fight. They're going to keep moving forward. Two kills picked up for Fnatic. I don't know why Cold jumped in right there. It was a brilliant setup from Fnatic waiting inside their jungle for the pick. But then Cold just throws himself into the fire as well for two kills. It's also just a bad read. You didn't have information about where Whippo was. Origin should have just run it down the mid lane and tried to pressure the tower to force Fnatic to move out of that position. You didn't have TP on Thari, you were never going to win that. Yeah, it really takes me back to 2018 Whippo, who would constantly sacrifice himself in the lane, losing minions to make rotation plays. Back then, it was to help Caps in the mid lane. Now, Reckless back in full carry mode for Fnatic. He gets the support once more. Oh, doubling the CS of the opposition. It, incredible thus far, 82 to 43. Patrick, who has looked so good in the first two games, now put in a severe deficit. The, the luxury of late game scaling no longer the threat that it once was. I mean, to be fair to Patrick and Mithy, their job was to kind of lose as gracefully as possible to Reckless and Hillis in this entire series, just by definition of the picks that they were put on. So I don't want to just slam him for that CS discrepancy. No, I mean, after those first few plays, this man cannot approach the wave to auto attack cross current, and it feels like things are not going to get easier as Vayne gets closer and closer to that first item. And we look back on this play, Seems like OG had the wrong read. Yeah, Origin have no idea where Fnatic are. They were like, I thought we were in the they were in the river. Why'd they do that? Mithy gets hooked up and, and cold. I just it's it's a huge blunder by him to go in. But again, you have the vision and the information that they weren't on the dragon. The minion wave was already forced towards the mid tower. Just hit it. Fnatic will have to respond or will have to move position. What it was was a little bit of greed from Mithy thinking, I need to get bot lane to get towards Patrick. The fastest way possible is through river instead of looping around through his jungle, which would have been considerably more time and Maybe if he gets there, maybe if they aren't there, they can get the minion wave. But they were. Fnatic knew what to do and are now uh, in a very good position in this game. Good news, of course, for the side of OG. Still two strong points on the map in terms of top and mid lane. Cole being built by the cannon, slowly stacking up 64 creeps, 60 rather, remaining now as it's 85 to 61, and a small CS advantage for Nuke Duck. But Nemesis is doing very well thus far on the Sassandra. Now we look forward to the next minutes of the game. When is the next play around this bottom lane? You know, Origin have some summoner spells back up. Mithy, Flash, and Heal will be returning, returning shortly. But the way Fnatic have been playing and the way they have been so successful, especially in the second half of the split, is Broxa starting his plays around mid lane. Walk up, that means Nemesis gets to go melee range of the minions, basically push up the wave, and then look for these rotations. They will constantly use their control wards inside of this river in key brushes like the Pixel or the bush Broxa is sitting in right now to make sure that that walkway down towards bottom lane is completely clear of enemy wards. And almost like Origin's best option in this case is just swap lanes and get out of this because Fnatic will constantly be looking for the dive. The difference is Cold is under the tower. Now pulling back here. Have to play this one perfectly or they will get taken out. Breakfast getting more and more threatening. Level six for the pike. The resets can come in, but they're trying to take down Nemesis before the fight even kicks off. He will make it back over the wall. Only three stacks of the concussive blow. The retreat comes in from Fnatic. Nothing else going to drop down here. They managed to survive, but of course expending the TP there. But it was always a question of our origin eventually going to just trade this bot lane, sack it, and then try to get something else, trade objectives, maybe like the Herald, especially with Drake also being down, or were they going to try to set a trap? And unfortunately, I feel like they expended more, so despite the fact that they didn't die there, it still feels like a win for Fnatic. Yeah, I mean, they're constantly trying to bail Patrick out of this lane, but it's a level six Ezreal at 11 minutes. Reckless is level eight, Bwipo is level nine. I mean, he is hopelessly behind here with only 61 minions to his name, and 
Now he actually sees some movement. Alfari is very far forward. Has the flash though, but Brox is behind. Now pulling back, has to be smart about how he plays this one. Ulti coming out, trying to burn out the ulti from Alfari, but I just feel like it's not the right choice as the revival is there. Alfari now set to fall, does have the stopwatch, will not use it, and Whippo grabbing the kill. And finally, with Origin trying to give all these resources to bail out bot lane, it leaves Alfari exposed. And I'm almost curious if this is an issue where we know that Mithy is a big voice, we know that he's been shot caller in the past. If this is Origin's attention getting focused down here because you have someone like Mithy saying, no, 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 unlock me, unlock me, unlock me. Oh, Cold looking for the engage, but Broxa quick on the fingers to use the tunnel and escape. It is looking rough now for Origin, and I like that you bring that up because it's like if Mithy has to focus so much on just staying alive in the 2v2, how do you make those calls that say Broxa is headed up topside? And again, talking with Yamato, he was talking about one of the strategies was when you were facing the old school Mithy is you just camp his lane. You try to put Mithy behind because he was known as a shot caller and a very loud voice. And if you can distract him, you can slow down Origin, who are such a tempo-reliant team. And of course, just shutting down that voice, shutting down the ability for them to make these clean calls feels like it opens up so many opportunities across the map. And Fnatic, absolutely comfortable here in this game. 3k gold advantage, reckless on the vein. You've got a near dream team on the top side in terms of Fnatic comfort picks. And Patrick has to be careful about how he approaches here. Still very behind in this game. Yeah, but Origin did make the right call, I feel, to rotate up towards this top side. Unfortunately for them, Reckless is playing an AD carry that runs the teleport. So on the vein, he has the ability to side lane against the Kennen. Probably not great in the 1v1. Or he can just reset TP immediately back top lane, look to gain priority, damage on tower, or potentially the Herald. And there's just a big item difference. Reckless now has uh, his completed item. When he pops his final hour, he's also going to have all of those stats behind him. So he is a very terrifying champion at this point, and that gives Fnatic to have confidence like that, to play for the tower and the Herald at the same time. So for a second, Nuke Duck was moving up, but he decides against it. Again, Origin are in full damage control at the moment, while Fnatic walk all over them. They're trying to stop the bleeding, but the Herald goes down. Top lane turret may fall before plating even drops, so this gold lead will continue to balloon more and more for Fnatic. And it's just the idea that Origin are just watching this happen instead of trying to set up maybe pressure around the Infernal Dragon, maybe clearing out Vision to try to look for a pick. They're literally just watching Fnatic take the game away from them instead of trying to make proactive plays. Well, here we go. We got one bot. I thought Alfari now needs to retreat. Nuta going to step. Just block the creep wave. Waiting a step forward now. Now going to try to block it out the point. Click CC. Nemesis going to flash away to safety, but a TP now burned bot side by Whippo. No ultimate available for the chase. Pike now moving forward, uses the ulti. Ooh, almost gets Patrick <laughs> on the shift out. But Hillsang definitely going to be in trouble. Has already dashed. Will dash out the Wait, safety. they got a kill. Now going to get more on the bottom side. Alfari using the ultimate here. Cold now coming in as well. Ultimate comes in from the Ezreal. Not going to connect on anybody. Cold most likely set to fall here. Will use the Cataclysm immediately taken out as Proxa finds the kill. Fnatic just running over Origin at the moment. They get all those kills with an Infernal Drake spawning one more time. They are playing so proactively in this early game. And Alfari even has to just kill himself. He doesn't know if Fnatic is chasing him or not, so he has to fall down. A Herald is dropped in mid lane as well, so Fnatic just take the entire map into their control. An absolute dominance now from Fnatic in this game. We thought maybe their mental game would be broke, but you have to remember there are so many veterans on this team. The sheer amount of experience is baffling. Whippo and Nemesis, the younger players in terms of LEC matches, but the rest of the team veterans overall. And it just goes back to that idea. If it's not broken, you know, don't try to fix it. Why did we even enter this best of five with so much priority over Sona Tarek when Fnatic haven't been forced to show anything else? They go back to standard. They look so much cleaner this time around. Putting that faith in, in Hillisang and Reckless, the two most experienced members of the team, and we look on the opposite side, and Fnatic now also set up to focus the youngest member of the OG lineup in Patrick, a guy who's just been repeatedly set up just to kind of survive outside of that game one. Yes, he has been. Oh man, still again, a two level difference between him and Reckless. Reckless in prime position to carry and now they're just looking for the flank here. Nuke Duck doesn't have the flash. That is a fast pike and a vein coming in on the side. How do you get away from this? So hook gonna go, Nuke Duck is gonna back away. Oh, he's just gonna get pinned into the wall. He can't stop the vein from hitting him. The chain CC is gonna be brutal here. Can he get anything else out of this? Nuke Duck trying to sidestep, but you just can't sidestep it. The vein finds the auto attacks. Reckless grabs another kill. You know, one of the things that Origin was so good at during the regular season was just trading objectives, especially when you have the slower early game, but they are not. They're just getting beaten oh, everywhere. Stepping forward once again, cannot what? push any buttons. The chain CC from Fnatic in this game is beautiful. We heard the decks talk about how good OG is about playing this, but Fnatic now looking to match them here in this game. Alfari desperately using the ult, trying to find a kill back, but Rexite goes out, comes right back up, and Whippo now on a rampage. Just bleeding across the map. Fnatic now, they have their pick of the litter, and it's the fact that they're taking kills and they're transitioning them into 
important two objectives. And that's why Fnatic are springboard and snowballing through this game so quickly. It's that it's a team fight onto a Herald, a team fight or a pick into a tower. And Origin feel like they're playing on half speed right now, where play happens top lane, wait 20 seconds, then engage bottom lane, while Fnatic have already shown up and are ready, and they have no vision to see Reckless and Hillsang on the chase. And it's devastating against this type of composition. Again, you keep talking about how far Patrick is behind, but with the changes to not having access to double tier, you don't have that same, you know, scaling potential. Yes, Ryze will do a lot of damage, and Ryze's range can match someone like Vayne, but again, there's still so many damage threats on Fnatic's comp. I think at this point, if you're this far behind uh, as Origins composition, you're looking for a miracle. Absolutely, okay. I mean, you look at a champion like Pike alone, and just the, how strong that champion is when he gets to snowball. And how far, unfortunately, the Lux does not have the luxury of focusing down a single opponent in this matchup. It's both the Rek'Sai and Aatrox ult are going to make them relatively hard to kill. Now, something that has plagued Fnatic so far in this series is overreaching for objectives and for kills. Well, right now, they're just reaching because Nuke Duck in the same position Again, is getting caught. Point and click, locks down. Hillisang here as well, throws out the death from below, donates a bit more gold over to Fnatic, but it is absolute dominance here in game three. Just completely different look from Origin. Just rolling over and dying right now. And this is the origin that I feel like was criticized so much after the G2 series that once they fall behind, they get a little lost. They don't take the big risks. But Fnatic also, you can't fault them. They've been playing fantastically in this early game. So now the question was answered. If we go back to standard, Fnatic still have so much teeth, so much bite behind them. But will we get this option? Is this going to be now we turn into the rest of this best of five? Whereas as long as you don't or you deny the crazy picks, Fnatic can just walk through origin. Now coming in the claw over the wall, of course, POV stream for game four. Didn't know if we were going to have one, but now it's looking a lot more likely. Hillisang or Mithy, if you want to vote. The action continues in the mid lane. Once again, an explosive game. Baron not even available yet, but already Fnatic have both a Mountain and an Infernal. On top of a two-item vein. On top of a snowball to nearly <laughs> every member of this team. So, OG, once again, in this miracle position that it felt like Fnatic were in game one, where maybe they could have made the Sonotaric work, but... We're gonna have to see if OG can execute. Yeah, it's a commanding p position here for Fnatic. And what we are, what we are specifically looking for is what have Fnatic changed in between games? Did they mend some of the issues that they had where they were diving towers or when they get a big lead like this, can they close? They're answering that question now. Far stepping forward was now pulled back in the middle of the team. They're trying to find all the kills, but they're diving a tower once again. We're gonna be resurrecting. Have to be careful here, OG. Not going to fall down. Flashing out to safety. Nemesis deleted. Nuketuck can now run forward here. And Fnatic overstay their welcome on the bottom side. Tower are Fnatic's worst enemy this series. Just focus the objective. There's no need to look for these dives and give the opportunity the chain CC or the CC potential of Braum and Rise as well as uh, Alfari from Kennen. Like, don't do it. I just don't get it. They're up 10,000 gold. They can literally just walk at towers and kill them, but Origin are just too much of a bait, I suppose. Fnatic, again, they see 5v4. It's so juicy, but there's still a teleport on towards this rise, and the Zonius means that Alfari does not get bursted down right off the bat. Yeah, and huge credit to the uh, cannon ultimate. It basically split the fight and put Whipple on one side of the cannon ultimate and the rest of Fnatic on the other side. So while he is tanking and doing his job and underneath the tower, there's no follow-up. Yeah, it's also like, how do you dive uh, a Kennen and a Braum and Ezreal to get away. Oh, it's not easy. To find it. Ezreal, can they take him out? Hillsang now going to be forced to back off. He burned the flash in the earlier fight. Can they get more here? Have to be careful. That health bar gets any lower. We will see the death from below come out. Hillsang goes for a super aggressive play. He saw the flash burn in the last fight and he wanted to find the kill, but no one is there to back him up. Nuketuck again in the side lane. He's doing a good job of farming up. He's trying to, to play this rise when the rest of his team is behind to get minions. He's been caught out before, though. And now that Baron is live, this is where Fnatic can close. It becomes so much easier when you have an objective to play around that's not a tower. You know, if you force Origin to come to you, team fighting with this composition is much easier than it is by just running at them with five members. I was just chuckling about that. I was like, it feels like Fnatic just get a massive buff around Baron because they just prefer to fight in jungle rather than fight in lane. And even then, in the last game, too, there were questions we had about this Fnatic team. You know, with, with the Baron buff in particular, where they were split, whether or not they wanted to take it down or, or turn and fight. So there have been problems for Fnatic, even after two very impressive early games for this team. And we already saw a, a stumble here, giving one kill over to Origin. It's not a lot. It's not going to change the outcome of this game. But all the Fnatic fans that say they must win three games in a row see these, these cracks in the armor and wonder, can they actually do it?
get more and more nervous. And obviously for OG, 2-0 up already, they can afford to lose a game. They do not want to. They do still have the potential to come back in this game, especially if Fnatic continues to force their fight. But a spectacular series so far for OG. Well, the momentum could shift in the favor of Fnatic for the first time if they can find this game win. Yeah, it's not just about the momentum. It's about the mind games. You know, if Fnatic win in this composition, it basically reinforces this idea of let's just play standard. Let's just eliminate all of the variables and we can be the better team. That is huge, especially when you were Origin, which frankly, they looked really tilted when they started to lose to G2, who have not shown the ability to kind of bounce back as consistently. They need to close this series. Very much could be about bouncing back in this game. It's about bouncing back for OG in the series. It's about bouncing back for Fnatic. Vision will go down. Nuketuck is on the bottom side. Immediately, you start to see him run up. Yeah, he doesn't have the teleport himself, so Realm Orb is his only option to enter the fight. There is a flash on this cannon. They can look for the 5 versus 5, but it's a tough one to win. Moving over the wall. Immediately, they try to get the fight kicked off. Cold so incredibly low. Eyes on Hillisang, where the reset's going to come in. Death from below. He can aim for Mithy, but Cold stops the resets and it tracks. But Fnatic still winning the fight. Nuketuck off to the side. Reckless, Reckless looking for the 1v1. Him. He wants to take Nuketuck out. He sees the last damage that remaining. Brox is going to be ready with the ultimate, but they're just moving forward. Nuketuck going to get taken down here. And Fnatic, free access to move down the mid lane. They already got the Baron, and they they just look to crush the base. There's only two members of Origin alive. They will blast this one open. Fnatic finding the mark earlier than they could in game number two, looking to close before Origin can come online. Huge swing of confidence for Fnatic. They could just look to end here. Patrick and Alfari, rather, for Fnatic now looking to end. Cold going to be respawning shortly. Mithy here. It could come down to one final fight. Hillisang, though, cut out in the middle of the team and just dies. What? Diving the towers once again, turns against Fnatic. And OG will hold on. The Baron buff still backing Fnatic up. Just not respecting the death timers, as well as the fact that Fnatic didn't have the cooldowns available to them. You look at Nemesis, he doesn't have the Lissandra ultimate. That's a completely different end if you can threaten with the po uh, potential dive from Lissandra. But again, underneath their own arrogance, Fnatic don't close the game. They just collapse. They're tilting me with these turret dives. <laughs> like, come on. Of course, still have a 10k gold lead. Still very much have enough time left on the Baron buff to try to end this game, but have to give a bit more respect to OG, and in that case, the death timers. But how many times are we going to say, you just got to give a bit more respect to these tower dives? You can play the game more methodical, a little bit slower here. The towers are yours. The game is yours, Fnatic. You don't need to be so greedy. And of course, for Hillisang, has to respect the Braum a little bit more in those exchanges. Not the mobility of the pike, not quite as fantastic once you have been stacked up on the concussive blows. And as we look back at the fight, you can see Fnatic playing this one beautifully. Yeah, Origin know the only way they win is if they fully commit to a fight. So, uh, unfortunately, they just don't have the damage. It's Patrick there from the start. Nuke Duck is zoned on the bottom. Reckless eventually chases him away, but there's no Alfari as well. So you're fighting 3v2 effectively at the start. So it's numbers favored for Origin, but you have absolutely no damage with this. Ezreal that just got completely bodied in the lane phase. Just shows the mindset from uh, Fnatic and Reckless in particular, the fact that he's flashing forward at the rise because he knows he can go for the duel. Yeah, and Reckless, of course, at an incredibly strong point, has the Phantom Dancer now as well. So in terms of dueling, this Fane is terrifying. Noob Duck now one and four. And after the monumental performance there in game two, surprising to see him knocked down so far, but that is the strength of Fnatic in this game. Feels like the Phantom Dancer changes were really kind of what put the crit ADCs over the top, the fact that it gives you that lifeline passive now, and really took a lot of uh, wind out of Ezreal sails. You know, it felt like Ezreal kind of sat in the same position on the tier list, but every other ADC jumped above him because he can't itemize into Phantom Dancer like they can and get all of these defensive and offensive benefits. Yeah, especially for those shorter range carries like the Vayne here as Fnatic press on forward towards this tower. They're teleporting behind Origin, are looking for the fight to try and keep their hopes alive. Realm Warp not coming in with a position right against the wall. Far into the backside, focusing down Hillisang, immediately turning back. That's a beautiful start to the fight. Two members immediately deleted. Now is the time to turn, but Whippo is alive and well. Brox is leaping forward, trying to lock down one member. He's going to try to take down Noob Duck. Now that's one. Looking for Alfari next. The ultimate already burned. The fight turning against them. Fnatic, I cannot believe it. Reckless and Hillisang die immediately. But in what is a 3v5, Nemesis, Whippo, and Broxa are going to try to find the turn. Alfari looking for the outplay. Spike comes in, looking for the knockup. He's going to get it down. One, two. That's that's gonna be it. Fnatic right here, their backs against the wall. They find the fight, they turn the fight against Origin, and they are going to find the win to bring themselves back into the series. The reverse sweep is still on the cards here for Fnatic, a dominant showing in the early game up against Origin. And at the end, they didn't even need their bottom lane. Their bottom lane, that got everything in this match. It was still 3v5, and they pulled out the victory. But it completely changes the dynamic of this best of five. Are we going to see Origin now try to run back with a standard-oriented composition, 
5v5, let's just play it out, everyone on the comfort picks, or is Origin going to try to put Fnatic again off the back foot? They saw how much success they had when you forced them off of their comfort picks. And now Fnatic, you can see the smiles are coming out on their faces, the pressure was on. They know they pulled out a big win. Say hi five to the fans for Origin. Still in a comfortable position, still have a game advantage. It's still only going to take them one more win to close out the series, but have to be smart as to how they approach this next game. Yeah, Origin gonna have to clean up the early a little bit. I feel like that's two games in a row. In game number two, they were able to outscale. They were able to hold the line. Game number three was not the same story here for Origin. So they must stop the bleeding early on, and then it's a very different series. If you're gonna take the standard no Sonoteric, I think that you can't just have a defensive bot lane. Yes, I like that for Origin because they have been shown that they can play around utility picks on their bot lane, but if Fnatic are going to do that to you, I think you have to bring firepower. You need to try to take it to them, especially for how important Mithy is for trying to direct this team. Get him ahead. Origin look like a completely different team because you've unlocked one of your key voices. Yeah, I also need to see Cold play for mid lane more often because this time around it was Brox and Nemesis just running bot lane and smashing 4v2 tower dives. If Cold can try to control mid lane a little bit more and put Nuke Duck in a position where he can be the one to move or just to win that mid lane matchup, that gives them so much more uh, ability to play in the early game. And we saw early game that Cold was the one who split the map top side. He thought he was setting himself up for success, but he set up Broxa perfectly to move down to the yeah. bottom side. And after what was an incredibly fanatic level two trade, where we saw so many sums burn, where we saw so much damage going down on this Origin bot lane, it felt like Fnatic were just in complete control. And it seems like once this team is dictating the pace, there's just not a lot you can do. Again, it's also that confidence. We talked about how Fnatic kept going for those tower dives, but it's also the fact that it worked early on. Fnatic now know hey, if we play through bot lane, we can crack them. Like, Reckless and Hilly are probably thinking, we're the better 2v2. We will challenge you every single time. And with that confidence, we've already seen how terrifying they can be. Yeah, and they'll be looking for picks like the Pike again that they can be active with in their 2v2 bottom lane. It was something that was so strong for them in the regular season, counterpicking for support so that Reckless can find the engagements that allow Fnatic to win those trades, to make those dives happen, and to snowball through bot lane. And it does feel like this is where we see the mismatch of these two teams in the sense that Fnatic absolutely want to play through their bot lane and OG need their bot lane to at least be doing okay because Mithy is such an important voice. And it feels like in that lens, bot lane can be so incredibly Fnatic favored. But to get more insight on game three, let's hear from our analysts. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, Fnatic has entered the building. I think they were, I don't <laughs> know where you know? they were. I don't know what happened, but they got a game on the board, and now we have a completely different ball game here in the Ahoy. So let's talk about how they won this uh, game three with their backs against the wall, Rory. You said it doesn't feel like Fnatic in the previous games. Was this the Fnatic you wanted to see, and what did they do well in this game? It actually is the Fnatic that I wanted to see. Against OG, I think it's really important to shut down Mithy in general, because he's obviously going to be the one that facilitates roams, that facilitates almost like how they play. So I think shutting him down and actually playing towards the bot side of the map is really, really impactful. And Rek is also the one that has been the most consistent member on Fnatic, and has always been to be counted on when it comes down to it. I feel like this is the type of game that signifies what all the analysts predicted. When we think of Fnatic beating OG, it is all about creating that pressure into the bottom side, Reckless taking over the game when he reaches his power spikes. We saw the early dive on bottom, and all of a sudden, they were in a driving position because all of a sudden, Hillisan could be more creative, Reckless could yeah. take over the game, and all was good. Yeah, as we take a look at those uh, early replays, it kind of is a perfect fit because you want Fnatic to play to the bot lane, and you also know that was a weak point for OG versus G2. So. Then I, I asked myself the question, why didn't you do this the last two games? What enabled them to do it this game? I mean, first of all, the Sona Tarek is out of yeah. it, so that helps a lot. And honestly, having this kind of uh, setup, especially with Brox and Cole kind of trading sides, allowed them to play to the bottom side way earlier than they usually can, whereas um, OG had no response whatsoever and couldn't actually respond to the early dive. I feel like OG is very prepared for these cocktail situations where new champions appear because they are known for their versatility. Fnatic is known for their foundation. They have the same picks all over and over and they make it work because they've actually achieved mastery on these champions. Yeah, and one of the picks we highlighted in their dream composition is the Aatrox for Guipo. And I also don't think he's had the best day so far, but now in this game, he goes absolutely off on his favorite pick. So that's good because if you know that you're sometimes taking fights that aren't that favorable in games one and two, and you need to be proactive, you want Guipo to play like this. The problem is that it's a double-edged sword. So what do you guys make of this guy in Fnatic and how he's been playing so far? I think he has been really volatile. In some games, he has been carrying. In other games, he has been feeding uh, like uh, there's no tomorrow. 
but I think it's more about how they play around him. I think whenever he has some kind of resources coming into him, where, it's, where Broxa or uh, especially Nemesis roam towards the top lane, he's actually playing really well, really well. So he needs some kind of advantage in the game to basically play off of. And if he doesn't have that, he's basically going to be too volatile for his own good. Can that be himself in a good lane matchup or help from the jungler? Or is it only by help from the jungler? I think it's by the help of the jungler and by the help of the mid laner. Because honestly, Alfari is too good in lane to actually do anything against. And I think given actually like having the Ken Aatrox matchup is maybe even bad for them. Whereas I think they can opt into something like the Vladimir and basically just play a bit safe on the top lane. Don't allow people to play into that. I feel like it's so crazy because Alfari is one of the best top laners in terms of laning that we have in Europe. But I feel like the resources that he's getting from his team, they're just not there. We saw the Nemesis ganks, we saw also the Broxa ganks. Great timing ganks, but absolutely no impact from Cold in the top lane. And it makes me question the champion choice in Canon, as uh, Amazing just said. Yeah, we're going to take a look at the, the whole draft, actually, from the side of OG. And of course, the thing that jumps out here as well is it's the first time we see standard versus standard. In a position where it's standard versus standard, how much lower do OG's chances get? I think uh, plenty much lower, especially <laughs> if they won't decide to pick the Braum into the vein. I think Vayne gets a free matchup. I feel like there's no creativity there. I want to see the Tom Kench. I want to see the utility coming from the bot lane and a kind of situation where the mid lane can transition the pressure into the bottom as well. Yeah, I would not just like to see utility. Honestly, if you play against Fnatic, you have to shut down Reckless in some kind of way. So honestly, playing lane-centric champions like the Ash, like the uh, Varus maybe even would be good for them instead of opting for an SL who's just going to scale and be counterpicked yes. and then you give basically everything that Fnatic wants to them. Now, um, amazing, you were of course in the position where you played versus Fnatic yeah. in the summer finals. You guys won game one very convincingly. You also had Nukeduk, you also had Giotto, yeah. but you guys lost Steam. You also went for that Ezreal pick further in the series. Are you starting to see similarities and do you think there's a problem in kind of the choices that OG makes when the series go on in confidence? Maybe Giliotto is not as confident as he sometimes likes to say he is or should seem to be. I think in some kind of crucial things, uh, and especially crucial situations like this one, he has to just put the foot on and say, okay, we're going to play the style that we've learned, we're going to continue to play it and not defer from it. And I think that's something where, that I've seen multiple times now where he just honestly has to be more confident in himself because his pick bands, when they're on, they're on. Yeah, I completely agree. And that's also why he's coach of the split. And I yeah. think, you know, the way we speak about Fnatic after only getting one win, I think goes back to how we talked about them at the beginning of the show, Yamato. Because you said, these guys, they have what it takes to take that step, you know, to go further. So if you give them one game, you have to be scared of them. Yeah. Um, however, I don't want to go too far because OG crushed them in the first two yes. games. And it's very hard for me to... Um, think about what's going to happen in the series going forward in that regard. I feel like OG, probably they need to pick blue side. I don't know what side they're going to choose, but I feel like they need to free up some bands because they're banning Kale, Silas, and all of a sudden Vayne is a big issue. They couldn't find a way to shut it down. Draven was also getting banned. I feel like they need to bring up another trick that they had up their sleeve because always when they know what's coming towards them, they bring up the insane drafts that actually manhandles the enemy team. Yeah, and if you're OG, you know that in game four, they're gonna pick something again from Fnatic that works for Reckless. And you know they're gonna go towards that bottom lane. I think that's something that's a given. So do you then work specifically to shut that down, Maris? Because Reckless is the guy that played out of his mind last, last game. I mean, you just gotta do it. Honestly, Reckless and there's so many things you can say about him. Yeah, maybe in the regular season, he sometimes doesn't show up or he has some kind of weird things happening where he's like too focused on certain champions. But when it counts, Honestly, he is clutch. He will win you games, no matter what. So if you don't attack him early and you basically just shut it down completely, where he doesn't feel comfortable at all, and he maybe has to scale into three, four items, and cannot power spike as early as he did this game, Fnatic is a different team, and Reckless is a different player. So they have to do that, and then see where that goes and where it leads them. Is this all boiling down to what happens in the bot lane? Yes, if the jungles visit or not, but is, are those the matchups that are going to decide the series? For sure, because if we look look at the other side of the map, I feel like the impact that they, the, the kind of pressure they create towards Afari is just non-existent. And then we speak about which players are going to enable the gameplay of, uh, of course, OG is always Nuktak and Mithy. Right now, Nuktak is getting the good matchups, but nothing is happening for Mithy. So on attack was fancy, the Blitzcrank was good, then all of a sudden you saw the Mithy that has those MVP performances with the Blitz hooking everyone all over the place. I want to see something similar. Yeah. I personally, I want to see a Tom Kench and an Ash.
A Tom Kench and a Nash. Van. With you know, a vein band. Tom Kench is the worst <laughs> performing support in Europe, and uh, Mithy is two wins, four losses on it. So Those I four know. losses were very early. Okay, very okay, early. it doesn't early count. OG. It doesn't count. It doesn't count. <laughs> so uh, let's look ahead then. OG, they picked blue side for the next game. That's a change of pace, right? Now they find themselves on the blue side. Where are they going? Are they looking for the pick for Nuketuck? Are they waiting? What's the plan? I think, honestly, if I were them, I would just go for Jungle Pile. I basically just picked the strongest jungle champion there is, maybe up for the Rek'Sai again. Because honestly, I think in this series, especially against someone like Boxer, who is really, really good at the early game, especially when he has a jungle player matchup, you have to take that away to a certain extent. I think on blue side, you can do that easily. The Kinner didn't look that strong for them either, so why not up for the Rek'Sai if it's open? I feel like uh, blue side is the wiser choice because they need to free up some bans. They yeah. need to create space to ban because Silas is a perma ban on red, and something that they've been banning the entire series is the KO. They have now room to ban the Vayne, ban the Lissandra. They can create situations where they can dictate the pace more. Because I don't think Nuketuck will be in a worse match just because he blind picks. I think it's all about just freeing up bans and creating a situation where they get a better both lane draft. Yeah, because mentality-wise, you know, you're still on match point. And that's a tough one because you know you just lost that game and it, it seems like you're up against it. But you got to remember, you're on match point. One game and you're in that final. What are your gut feelings say? What does your gut feeling say? Is Origin closing it out or are we going to game five? I'm seeing a game five coming. It has to happen too. Woo. I feel like if, if I could see the draft before I make my prediction, <laughs> I feel like it would be that's way easier. Yet, like if OG that's can cheap. Like put up <laughs> Like, I have another trick up the sleeve. I'm very confident in my prediction. But right now, Fnatic, if they can continue at the same path, we're going to have a game five. We're going to have yep. a beautiful series at their hand. Fantastic. Well, it was do or die for Fnatic, and it still is. They did secure a crucial win to stay in the series, and game four is coming up next. Don't miss it. Now stepping forward, Patrick has to be careful about how he's going to approach this one. Does move out now. The immediate knockup is going to follow. Patrick all but set to fall. First blood. Unbreakable has been used. Mithy's still alive. Now comes the flag and drag in. Hillisang has grabbed the kill. Cold and Nuketuck now on the tree. But Buffalo is stepping forward. Fnatic have the momentum in this fight. They're going to keep moving forward. There is a drum here. Oh, Just kill these kids. I, I like it. I like it a lot. Two members immediately deleted. Now is the time to turn, but Flippo is alive and well. Broxa leaping forward, trying to lock down one member. He's going to try to take down Nuke Duck. Now that's one. Looking for Alfari next. The ultimate already burned. They find the fight. They turn the fight against Origin, and they are going to find the win to bring themselves back into the series.